have to be honest with y'all. Like, I'll be honest with myself. I don't think I'm feeling A in that much no more. We're back again to play some games. We are back with Mayday Memory. And the last time we found out about Ann's uh, drug addiction. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> we went to his house and we saw Elena. And she told us to go over some papers and some videos of Ann's past. About Ann's past. But, he, but she said, do not let him see the ending of the videos. But I'm pretty sure we're going to disregard whatever she told us. And we're just going to watch the whole thing. So before we start, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Um, make sure you follow me on all my social media. It's always in the description below. And we can get started. Okay, um, I need to look at the... The memory chip before I start the chapter. Where is this? Right in front of me is the interiors of a luxurious mansion. It looks like where Anne currently lives. Seems like it's where Anne used to live. Inside the house. Oh, wait. What is this? Oh, I see what's going on. I see what's going on. Um. So this isn't the next chapter, technically, but this is the videos we're looking at. So I can't move on to the next chapter until I watch this chip, which is going to be the length of the chapter. Okay. Inside the house was Anne, innocently running around and playing. The atmosphere suddenly turned serious and Anne stopped in his tracks. Mom, what happened? I... Mom can't play with you right now. <sighs> what time did you say they were coming? In five minutes. Anne figured out what was going on, judging by his parents' restless expressions. They're here. With the chiming of the doorbell, the doors open and two people enter the building. One was an adult and the other a child who looked to be in Anne's age. Hello, we're from the Evergreen Hospital. You're Anne's legal guardians, correct? Ah, we've been waiting for you. I am Anne's mother. And this is his father. And this is our child's tutor. I think it's appropriate if she came here too. How old are you? Nice to meet you. I am Elaine, Anne's private tutor. Nice to meet you. This here is Adrian. Was good, Adrian. Adrian? This child is... Looking like he suddenly had a difficult time standing up, Anne's father leaned towards his wife. Anne's mother's eyes were slightly red. Hey, Adrian. Say hi. They're your real parents. Hello, Adrian. Hi. But the child named Adrian just stood there, staring at the floor. In his hands was a strange mechanical toy. <laughs> Please understand. He lost his mother not too long ago. Uh, what I mean is, Adrian's adoptive mother. Yes, of course. He gotta be, it's gotta be rough for him. If we had known earlier, we would have gone to her funeral. But thanks to that, we were able to find our real son. You, don't say that in front of Aang. It's truly sad. Of course, Adrian's lost his father and mother too, but also since our two families' lovely children were swapped. Huh. Because of the blackout ten years ago, something happened at our hospital that shouldn't have ever happened. Ah, the blackout. Right. I thought the world was really ending back there. In just one moment, everything electric just died out. On top of that, I couldn't even imagine that our child would get mixed up with another child either. Are you sure? Because Anne has white hair, you have white hair. Are you positive? Curious about what his parents were talking about with such serious expressions, Anne walked up next to them and looked at them. Mom, Dad, what are you talking about? Anne, this is 
Anne's father hesitated for a moment about how to introduce a how to introduce Adrian. Hotai's wife asked me for help. He's your brother. Oh right, it's your younger brother. Younger brother. I had a younger brother. That's right. Your mom and dad have adopted a younger brother for you. Adopted? Mm, he'll still play with me, right? Of course. Whoa, great. Hey, Anne, introduce yourself to Adrian. Hi. Did something bad happen? Adrian stayed silent, but Anne took his hand and began dragging him. Let's play. If you play for a bit, you'll be in a better mood. Still unconvinced, Adrian followed Anne with a frowning face. What a relief. Anne seems to be okay with it. He's such a bright kid, I doubt he will even give it a second thought. Anyways, even though it happened because of the blackout, we at Evergreen Hospital would like to extend a sincere apology once more. Honestly, I can't really say that I'm in a really good mood, but... I don't see a reason to keep a grudge against you at this point. The kids are already 10 years old too. Now we have two sons, and have to work on compensating for the time we lost. Elaine here will be in charge of teaching the boys everything. Yes, that's right. Alright, our hospital will also do our best to repay you for the damages caused because of this incident. I'll be on my way then. The video screen got darker. Now, another room of the mansion was visible. Elaine was having class with Adrian and Anne. <sighs> Adrian looked comfortable, a bit more used to his new home. But even so, his expression did not brighten up. Both of you read the book, right? Today we'll be reviewing Emily Bronte's, Bronte's work, Weathering Heights. What did both of you think about the book? Let's start with Emily. Um, you know that outsider guy? Oh, what's his face? Right. Healthcliff. Don't you think that guy was scary? He just came into the house and completely ruined everything. I thought that was sad. Poor Kathy. Anne was on the verge of tears. Adrian looked at Anne and began to smile. I see. How about you, Adrian? I... The only character I like was Hellcliff, the outsider. But even him, I don't really understand. Um, what part did you not understand? In order to meet Kathy again, Hellcliff came back to her house. I don't really understand that part. If that were me, I wouldn't go back. Uh, huh? Was that scream? Was that scream? <laughs> was that scream part of the music, or was someone really screaming? The scene changed, and it seemed like it's the next day. Oh no, she really screamed. Adrian! Adrian! He's gone. I asked everyone in the neighborhood. No one's seen him. Impossible. Where's he gone? My son. Mom. Dad. And go and find Adrian right now. Right now. You need to find him. You have to. After all this time, we just got him back. Adrian! Anne, filled with fear, ran outside. On the floor inside, the machine toy Adrian used to play with laid on the floor. Episode 15, Anne, Prince of Cryberries. <laughs> My bad. Um, Anne, Prince of Crybabies. Oh my god. I couldn't believe things like this were still happening these days. The Blackout 2007-5. Oh, we did learn about the Blackout. The Blackout in 2075. I heard that there was a massive power outage, and that's why Anne. So that's why Anne and the guy named Adrian are living each other's lives. 
Let's write this down so I can tell the rest of the team. Switch babies. I've only ever seen them in movies. I never thought I witnessed the one in real life. Come to think of it, I've heard the hospital where Aang and Adrian got switched. What was it? It was Evergreen. Evergreen? Oh right, it was called Evergreen. Sounds familiar, it does. I don't remember though. I feel like it was at the very I feel like it was at the very beginning. Where did I hear that name? The demonstration? Was that the demonstration? Right. The Evergreen incident from five years ago. The Evergreen Hospital and the Evergreen incident. Could the names just be a coincidence? I doubt it. Look at Anne, who was watching the video with me. Anne, are you alright? You know, why, what you mad for? <laughs> of course I am. I guess I'm healthier than I thought. Isn't it just the sedatives? Look. Look at the whites of my eyes. He pushed his face right in front of mine, telling me to look in his eyes. I almost fell backwards. You know, I can see just fine from here. It's so clear, right? It's totally healthy. It's not your eyes. Your problem lies here. I point to his head. Um, what do you mean? My ears? My ears are really ticklish. He's playing dumb. Mid-thought, I felt Anne stare at me. Staring at me. Why the stare? Del, thank you for just then. About what? When we were with Elaine, you... Because I told you to roll up your sleeve? Why would you thank me for that? I frowned, out, I frowned as I looked at Anne's arm, now covered by his clothes. Those wrists are too easy to see. Only was bound to find out sooner or later. Ah, so you mean if I'm going to get caught anyway, I just come clean about it? I'd rather die than be a burden. Wouldn't it feel better? The Anne snapped his fingers and started speaking with an expression like he just made the discovery of a lifetime. So what you're saying is, if you're going to be making a mess anyway, why not go all out? Mm, nah. No, that's absolutely not what I meant. That's why I heard anyway. I like it. This is my model from now on. I sincerely apologize to Elaine in my mind. Whatever you say, Anne. But can you please move over a little? Do you have to be so close to talk to me? Ah, I'm sorry. I didn't notice. You don't have that headache anymore, right? Because I have to go through these files now. But Anne didn't answer. He looked lost in thought. Is he upset? Don't. Come over here. Why? Anne let me outside Elaine's room and then into his room. He then knelt down in front of the drawer. You found a key back there, right? Hand it over, please. Sure. When we opened the drawer, I saw piles of notebooks. What's this? Is this? These are my diaries. Wait, then these are all? Anne pulled one of them out and started turning the pages. When I still my memories, I guess I like writing diaries. Well, I hit them away so I wouldn't be able to read them. Where is it? Ah, here we go. Anne stopped at one of the pages and showed me what was in it. December 31st, 2085. Adrian is gone. I looked at Anne in surprise. Keep reading. Mom and Dad sent me out to find, to find him, but I couldn't. What could he be? Did he not like me? Read this page here. He opened another notebook and handed it to me. February 3rd, 2089. After Adrian disappeared, things couldn't go back to where they were, how they were. It's been a while since I talked to my parents, unless it was absolutely necessary. They are the ones avoiding me. 
I feel more confused each day. It feels like I'm walking in somebody else's shoes. Shoes that were supposed to be Adrian's. And. Yes. And. Were you able to read everything yet? Part of it. Elaine is watching me 24-7. After that happened, I think I moved out together with Elaine. Then I joined my agency and became a star. Anne spoke like he was talking about someone else. He was acting calm, but he also seemed apathetic. Should I ask, should I ask him something? Yeah, I got, I got coins to give. How do you feel reading that? These are the diaries you wrote. Of course he won't remember it. I don't know. I feel confused. I don't know if I should say this. The person who wrote this diary, well, me. I feel sorry for him. Then he resumed after a long silence. To be honest, when I found this diary, I thought this was good enough. That I'd be able to recall something. But nothing's changed. I couldn't recall anything. It's like reading someone else's story. <sighs> don't give me that look. Del, yeah. you'll find my memories, right? Anne smiled harmlessly. I did promise him I'd find his memories, but... Like I said, I believe in you. I've got a good feeling about you. I told you, you shouldn't believe in something like that. You have no proof I'm even able to... And I told you that's not important. I let out a sigh. He just has a different way of thinking. And I think that's what's really special about you. How you can stay so positive. Even when you've lost your memories like I did. You're nothing like me. Wow, Del. You finally said it to your clients. You are unbelievable. Spurring your own twisted feelings out to a client is real mature. Do you feel confused every day? Like you're the only... One who doesn't know anything? Wanna hear something? You don't know anything about me. You don't know the half of it. We will find them, eh? Your memories. If not me, the rest of the team will find them somehow. God, stop it! Can you please stop saying that? Saying what? What? Del, I want you to find my memories. Uh, I need help. I've already decided. Sorry, I'm selfish like that. But this is better than them being a pathetic mess. So I don't want anyone else. I want you to find them. Wait. See? Keep it short. Stop adding words that aren't needed. Repeat after me. I will find them. I'll find them. Can't believe I'm doing this. See? You did it again. That's a bad habit. Again, I will find them. I will find them. I will find them. I will find them. <laughs> I love Anne. I love- Hey! Not sure why he found this hilarious, but Anne was laughing his head off. Are you done laughing? I think so. Then was that all? No. I'm saying, why me of all people? I don't have anything. Anne burst into tears when I said that. Why are you crying about? What are you crying about now? I just don't get you. I don't know. I thought about it after I lost my memory, and I think I'm really apathetic. And I think someone is just like me. I can feel that person feelings like they're my own. Is there someone else you thought was like you? Of course not. What? Anne took out his handkerchief and blew his nose. Of course, I'm a top star with both fame and wealth. And they're also lowest, shabbiest PI office. Oh, speaking of which, you guys need a new sofa. Wow, where did Mr. Empathy go? I tried to be sarcastic as usual, but my voice gave away the fact that I was feeling down. Well, it looks like jokes aren't going to work. I didn't think I'd have to resort to this. Anne sighed and put his hand on his waist. Del, I'm a man. I want to look cool sometimes. 
But what are you talking about? I mean, going on and on on why I fell in love with you makes me look bad. But I guess I have no choice now. Go on about what again? When I first saw you at the demonstration, I knew something was different about you. I saw you dealing with those, those crooks and thought you were amazing. And I found out you lost your memories, just like me. What are you trying to say? Dell, you're my hero. So it's my job to believe in you. What's he talking about? Did he just enter some different wall inside his head? Full of flowers and butterflies and stuff? Yeah, right. I'm no hero. Don't blindly believe in something. Jeez. Is he just naive, or does he lack any sense of danger? But that, but that thought was completely wrong. Please, let me believe in you. As he said that, I saw his fingers tremble. I remember the day I first woke up three years ago. It's getting late. Y'all should get some rest. We'll talk more tomorrow. It's still dangerous to go outside, so don't think about sneaking out. Okay. Actually, I snuck out the office that night. Okay, of course I did. Immediately. Seeing, hearing, and feeling the streets covered in darkness, seeing people walking by with their collars up, and feeling the freezing wind trying to pierce my flesh. The first thing I felt was loneliness. That reminds me, it ain't the same thing before. I'm really bored these days, and so lonely. There's no place for me outside. When I figured that out, there was no other choice left than to go back to the office. So the next day, I felt so grateful to Sid, pretending he didn't see me leave. Hey. If you're going outside, take me with you. I like night strolls too, okay? I'm so selfish. I already know how he felt. What he fears. I've been through all of it. I know how much he needs someone by his side. Aang was just much more considerate than me. That's why I didn't, no didn't notice. I felt so ashamed of myself. I wanted to hide somewhere. Aang, remember what I said just a moment ago? Uh, dot 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 exclamation mark? What I said. Oh, telling me not to believe in you? <laughs> what was that? Was that a fourth wall break for a second? I'm sorry. Can I cancel that part? I'll try my best. So trust me. Trust me all you want. Ah, the cancellation deadline is in three seconds. That was close. And pretend to look at his watch and smile widely. He's got a sense of humor, all right. Down. Yes, I am. You really don't need that new sofa? No, I don't. Man. You stubborn jerk. You stubborn prick. <laughs> Got you back. I hold a grudge. Childish, huh? Yeah, that's real icky. What? What's icky is that sofa. That was the first time I talked to him like a friend. Right then, an emergency alarm sounded from my communicator. Hansel asked for the message. Come back to the office. Something weird came in the mail. Uh, Ayan, I have to go now. Already? Yeah, something came up. Okay, I understand. Ayan looked, Ayan looked lonely. Leaving him with that look on his face is difficult. Even for someone like me. Uh, Ayn? What are you going to do now? I'll sleep again. Until I can't sleep anymore. When I wake up, it'll be dark again. That makes it a little bearable. Listening to that made it more difficult to leave him. I was about to walk outside, but decided to come back and ask Ayn. Ayn, it's Adrian from the video. Don't you think he's related somehow? Adele. Right? And you say you had good eyes for things or something. Let's hear it. He let out a short snort and said, Frankly, I agree with you. I'm not sure if he's involved in this directly, but I want to meet him. Maybe it's because our lives were switched, but I feel connected to him. 
still faded. I can barely hear his last words. Thank you for telling me. I really have to go now. All right, good night. Then I remember something I wanted to tell Anne, that I trust him, that I trust his hunch. And you said you trusted me. So I'll trust you too. I'll look into this Adrian character. And I'll get your memories back, no matter what. You just wait. That wait wasn't really said with too much confidence or sincerity. Sincerity. Good luck. But Anne was smart enough to let that pass with a smile. Two things shocked me back at the office. One, Hansel was still in the office. Money? And that's, uh... That's American money. Two, the office door was blocked with a pile of boxes. You're still here? Why? Am I not allowed to? That's not what I meant. What's all this? It's what Roma said. Roma? Y'all know I have a grudge against that lady. It's what Roma sent us. I think it's related to Sid. I guess he's trying. I think. I guess she's trying to make fun of us, sending us heaps of useless junk. So we have to find something related to Sid inside. Inside that. Looks like it. In here, a timer. Hansel showed me a timer with a disturbing clock face. Its hands ticking away. I'll make a DVD and send you a copy. Let's find what Roma hid inside the boxes. Lucid time. Oh, that's the Mr. Cutter. That's the other game. Money. This paper. Um, this other newspaper. Hey, first try. I have to be honest with y'all. Like, I'll be honest with myself. I don't think I'm feeling A in that much no more. I don't know. I don't think. I don't think I'm feeling A in no more. <laughs> Nobody's really catching my eye right now. I mean, Ann's weird. He's weird. He's weird AF. And he gets he keeps getting weirder. <laughs> I guess Sid would be my next choice, but you know. We'll have to wait and see because nobody's really doing it for me. <laughs> um, thank you for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Uh, my social media is in the description. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.